Fellow saints, it's good to see you. Turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Romans 12, 6 through 8. And let me ask you a question. What would it be like if you fully acknowledged your spiritual gifts and you fully utilized them in the place that you were serving? You know, we just came off of a very contentious national election. And the idea on both sides of the aisle is that through our vote, through my vote, I can make the biggest difference in our nation and our world. And I want to propose to you that you can have an even greater impact, an even greater influence in your nation and your world through your spiritual gifts. When you understand how God has gifted you and you are serving in that capacity, in the place that he has placed you, you're going to change the environment. You're going to change the world um, and change the place where you're, uh, you're serving. But oftentimes we don't know how to use our spiritual gifts or what they even are. And so today we're going to explore that through Romans 12. Romans 12, the whole chapter is about worship. It says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is your spiritual act of worship. And then it jumps into the spiritual gifts. And um, the, the verse that sets it all up, it says that we are one body and we are members of each other. And then it talks about the spiritual gifts. And this is what it says in verse verses 6 through 8. It says, we have different gifts According to the grace given to each of us, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it is to uh, lead, then do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And so I think this passage explores two questions. It explores first, What are the spiritual gifts? What are they? Well, verse 6 tells us. It says we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Grace is the same word as gift. Uh, Both both come from the word charis. That's where you get the word charismatic or where you get charis, which is grace. And grace means God's resources, God's heavenly resources in your life. Oftentimes we think of the word grace in terms of our justification. It's by grace we have been saved. And that is true. It's through God's generosity. It's through God's mercy. It's through God's forgiveness in giving Jesus Christ that we're saved. But grace also explains how he empowers us, how he equips us. And it says here that we each have different gifts according to the grace, to the resources that God has for us. Um, And these uh, resources are spiritual abilities that he's given to all of us so that we can serve and build up the body of Christ. And in this Romans chapter 7 passage, you get, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 12 passage, you get seven different gifts. It talks about prophecy. Prophecy is being able to hear uh, hear from God in a particular situation. Serving, serving, that means it's someone who just loves to be behind the scenes and help other people out. Uh, the gift of teaching, you know, the gift of teaching. Encouragement, that, those are folks who just love Uh, building up other people, picking them up. They're always very positive people, um, giving, that they uh, love to give their time, their resources, their attention. Uh, The gift of leading, they just uh, 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 initially uh, 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 kind of naturally take initiative and jump into things. And then there's the gift of mercy, that you have a special capacity for those who are hurting and broken. And so this Romans chapter 7, I'm sorry, chapter 12 passage gives us seven different ones. Maybe to show us completion, uh, maybe show uh, uh, a fulfillment of the different gifts. But these are not all the spiritual gifts. In fact, you find another, an even fuller list of spiritual gifts in Romans, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and then in Ephesians 4. But all of these uh, lists of gifts that you find in the Bible, so those three passages, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and uh, Ephesians chapter 4, I think they're uh, illustrative uh, of the spiritual gifts, not exhaustive. In other words, it's not telling you all the spiritual gifts. I think there's an indefinite number of spiritual gifts out there, and it's uh, our job to find out how has God equipped us? How has he graced us? What special abilities has he, has he given to us so that we can serve and bless and build up the community? And here's the important point, is that we're not to compare our gifts with one another. It says in verse 6, it says, we have different gifts. Everybody's been given different gifts. And the important part for us is to know which gift 
or gifts he has given us. Uh, I see so many people comparing with other people and not and, and overlooking that the gift that God has for them. They'll say, oh, I, I wish I could sing like her, or I wish I could teach like him, or I wish I could lead like her. Or, um, and they, they spend some, so much time comparing. Well, God doesn't want us to compare. It says he has given us different gifts according to the grace that he himself has given us. So we're to put um, uh, ourselves uh, before Christ and say, Lord, what gift have you given me and how do you want me to use that? Because I believe when we understand what gift God has given us, and we use that gift to serve others, huge impact can take place uh, uh, in and through our lives. You know, when I think of uh, someone who knows their spiritual gift, I think of Jenny's Aunt Sue. Uh, Jenny's Aunt Sue is someone who has uh, served and uh, reached out to the elderly for over 40 years. And she herself is a nurse, uh, but in her ministry, in her spare time, she would go and she'd serve the elderly. And now it's come to the point where she's actually older than most of the people that she's serving. But think about the impact that she has had over the last 40 years. I don't know if Aunt Sue's ever given a sermon. I don't know if she's ever uh, led a church. But I know she has reached out to these um, folks in homes who, uh, who Aunt Sue is, some of the, is, is the only person who ever come and visits her. What an impact she's having in people's eyes. Why? Because she's not comparing, oh, I wish I had that gift or I wish I... She understands the gift that God has given her and she's using it. She's utilizing it. So that's what the gifts are. Uh, that's what they look like. And I, I encourage all of us to discover the gift that God has given us and then serve in that area. Second question I think this passage, Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8, answers is how are we to use our spiritual gift. What does it look like for us to actually serve in them and utilize them? And I want to give us one word for that, and it's the word faith. The way that we are to serve using our spiritual gifts is by faith. Look what verse 6 says again. It says, we have different gifts, different gifts according to the grace given each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. You see it there? We're to prophesy according to the faith, according to uh, uh, our faith. Now, what does that look like? I think that looks like two ways um, to serve by faith or with faith using our spiritual gift. The first one is that we believe that the gift that we've been given or the gifts that we, are the ones that God wants us to have and that that's the way that he wants us to serve, that we are to serve inside our spiritual gifts, not necessarily outside it. Uh, look at the pattern here that you see in verses 6 and 7. It says, if your gift of prophesying is prophesying, then what are you to do? You're to prophesy. If your gift is serving, what are you to do? You're to serve. If your gift is teaching, then teach. If your gift is to encourage, then give encouragement. Notice what it's not saying here. It's not saying if your gift is prophesying, then start a teaching ministry. Or if your gift is serving, then start uh, an encouragement or a mercy ministry. We're to, it says, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. If it's teaching, then teach. In other words, we're to serve in the area of our gifting. The greatest contribution that you can make to the body of Christ and the people are serving is the gift that you've been given. That's where you add the most value. And then there becomes this, what I call, a virtuous cycle when you serve in your gifts. Because when you serve in your area of gifting, other people are blessed. And as you see other people blessed, that encourages you all the more to serve in your area of giving, gifting, not outside it. Take, for example, I uh, my gift is teaching. That's what I'm doing, and that's what I do here. And when I serve in my gift of teaching, then other people in their gifts, whether it's the gift of prophecy or it's the gift of mercy or it's the gift of leading or encouraging, they're encouraged in their gift, and then they start operating more and more. As I bring them God's word, they're affirmed in whom God has made them to be. And then as I see them grow and get excited about how the Lord is using them in their lives, what do I want to do? I want to teach all the more. 
and all the teachers want to teach more and those who have the gift of serving they serve more uh, and the gift of mercy they have much more mercy that is the virtuous cycle that when we are a part of a body of Christ we belong to one another and we're using our different gifts even though we're together we're one we're using these different gifts all to build us all up so that's the first way that um, teaching uh, or serving uh, in our spiritual gifts by faith uh, what that looks like and you know let's say for example you're out of an area you're you're you ha you acknowledge your spiritual gift but it's not necessarily in the area or you're serving in the place that you would want to serve and this often happens a lot of times especially with um, with younger churches when we were first planting I mean everybody had to do everything it was all hands on deck everybody was helping with welcome everybody was helping with uh, 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 with kids ministry in fact um, one time I had well a number of times I was serving in the kids ministry but then what I did is like all right I and you know I love kids but it's not necessarily in my primary area of service I'm uh, I feel more called to adults but the church needed me in the kids ministry for for a for a season well what I did is I said well what gift do I have to bring these kids it was the gift of teaching so I utilized my gift of teaching even in a temporary area where I wouldn't be serving long term but to bring the most value and to add the, the, the biggest blessing and impact in people's lives so that's the first way by faith the second way by faith is this that when you serve out of your spiritual gift you have to believe that God is going to use you that's why he's given you that particular gift because he wants to bring his heavenly resources into people's lives and so he's equipped you with this special ability to do that as you get connected to the Holy Spirit. You know, Nikki Gumbel, um, uh, the president of Alpha, was interviewing Rick Warren. And he said, Rick, why do you think God uses you so much in other people's lives? And Rick Warren said, you want to know why I think God uses me? It's because I expect him to. I thought, that's so good. One of the reasons why God uses Rick Warren is because Rick Warren believes that every time he serves, God wants to use him. God wants to have an impact. And I think we need to take that attitude into all the places of where we serve, especially when we serve in the place of our spiritual gift. God wants to use you to bless other people all the more. Step out in faith and use your spiritual gift to help other people. Uh, you know, I heard uh, Bill Johnson share recently that when uh, he goes out to teach, and obviously he has the, the gift of teaching, tremendous teacher but sometimes he doesn't even go out on the platform out on the stage until he comes to that place of faith that they've actually until he believes that God I know you're going to use me in this message even though I might be feeling different things sometimes they've delayed the service until he got his heart right and then he came out in that place of faith I thought such a good picture of what it means to serve by faith is that when you go to serve believe with all your heart that God is going to use you that doesn't mean you have to control everything that means you get to pour it all out and expect him to use you in other people's lives you know last week we had our monthly uh, celebration and we had to do it on zoom because of COVID restrictions and so we set up the zoom and I thought everything was taken care of and so we I push uh, go live and we were live with zoom but about 20 minutes into my teaching time and I had really prepared this message. I really felt God wanted me to deliver this message. Well, about 20 minutes in, my own internet in my house went out. I don't know what happened, but it, it, uh, it started buffering, and then it just dropped us. And I was the one who ho was hosting the Zoom call, and then it got dropped, and I was like, oh, boy. And I was so discouraged, but I knew. I thought, God, I know you want, you want this message, because I felt this message I was given was uh, probably the most important sermon all year as I talked about Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 and but I was not going to be uh, deterred and so when the internet came back on we put zoom back on again people start populating the zoom call again and then after about 15 minutes after that actually about 10 minutes after that you know what happened the power on my street unexpectedly just went out I mean that's crazy the power on my street and I thought Satan, you are not getting the last word on this message. And so the, by that time, the Zoom call was basically over. I mean, there was like five minutes left, and I couldn't do anything. And I said, here's what I'm going to do. 
because I so believe God wants this message to get out and people need to hear it. That I, as soon as we were done, I opened up my laptop, I hit record, and I just recorded that thing. And I put it out there for people to hear. And people have been listening to it ever since uh, last Sunday. What was going on there? I believed in faith that God wanted to use this message that he put on my heart. And so I was not going to let any obstacle, anything get in my way. Friends, that's sometimes what it takes when we walk by faith and we serve by faith, that we believe that God wants to use you. And yes, there's going to be setbacks. And yes, we need to be open to learning and open to growing. That's part of the process. But when it's all said and done, he wants to use you. So step out there. Step out there in faith. So let me close by saying this. God wants you to change the world. He wants you to change your neighborhood. He wants you to change your church, and the place that you're serving. He wants to bring his heavenly grace into the area where you live, and he wants to do it through you. And principally, he wants to do it through your spiritual gifts. That's why he's given the grace and the abilities uh, that, that you have. Find them, discover them, acknowledge them, start to live in them and serve out of them by faith and watch God use you in a powerful way. So here's my assignment for you this week. This week, what's the area that you can serve using your spiritual gifts? I know we're all uh, 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 under shelter in place. We've got COVID restrictions, but there are people who are alone. There are people who are disconnected. There are people either at work or through church or our neighborhood who we can serve. What does it look like for you to use your spiritual gifts? And as you do, and as you ask the Lord to lead you and to guide you, watch him use you this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for, for this word. Thank you for this message of how you have equipped us all with different gifts. And it's grace from heaven. And may we uh, discover our gifts. And may we utilize them in the place that you have us to serve. Thank you, Lord, uh, for, uh, uh, for this call that you have for us to not only just believe in you, but to be used by you in other people's lives as well. We love you and we thank you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you. See you next week.